What is up, Jeff? In this video, I'm going to be teaching you strategies and tips that I use to help me survive longer in crab game and also just be better in general. Uh, before we get into this, as always, make sure you smash that like button, consider subscribing. And uh, quick disclaimer, you don't need to use all of these tips. Um, they're helpful in general, but they're not all necessary. So if you don't want to use this and you don't have to okay let's get into this video so the first tips that i want to talk about are like general tips for all sorts of things later i'm going to go in depth in each mini game and like how you can do those but uh first of all would be to use voice chat once again you don't have to do this if you're not comfortable with it but voice chat can be really useful it's a good way to communicate with people uh, you can form alliances you can make deals with people of course if you don't want to use this you could always use um regular chat but it's not as efficient if you're being chased by a maniac with a bomb um and the second general tip i would say would be to make use of b hops b hops are a really really helpful way to travel around they stand for bunny hops and you can do this by holding w and then a or d so you're holding forward and then left or right uh you make sure you're sprinting by holding shift and then keep jumping so you'll just be you'll be going diagonally so you need to make sure you angle yourself and you'll just be keep jumping and if you time your jumps right you'll start to gain momentum and you'll jump really really fast this is really helpful in all sorts of situations especially somebody that's chasing you doesn't know how to be hop then uh, they're just gonna be screwed because they'll never be able to reach you and of course you won't always be able to do this right away so make sure you do a little bit of practice before before you go into a game expecting to be able to do this, but it is really helpful. Okay, so now the first mini game I wanna talk about is red light, green light. It's a childhood classic, everybody knows what it is. You have to make sure you're moving, unless it's a red light, in which case you have to stand still. If you move while it's red light, then you, um, you peacefully stop living the thing about this one is it is it is a little bit finicky because like the the programming of it is a bit strange sometimes you'll just randomly explode so the first thing i want to talk about in this is whenever you're playing this i recommend going to the back being in the back is really helpful for two reasons one people can't slap you two you can slap people so how this works is that if you're behind somebody and it's red light you can give them a, a, a light push on the shoulder and they move and they die so it's really helpful and something good about this is that while you're doing this if anything's blocking the sight from uh evil danny over there uh if something's blocking the sight so for example a big rock or maybe another player then you can actually move a little bit so if somebody's just a little bit ahead of you you can you can walk up to them danny probably won't see you and then you can give them a slight little push and that's one less person another really helpful strategy that i use is i actually don't use my mouse except for pushing people because the thing is it can tell it counts as turning your camera a movement so if you're moving your mouse you you can explode so best thing i do to prevent this is i just don't even use my hand on that and it's unlikely that the mouse will actually move by itself so i can do that and it just helps decrease the chance of me getting seen sometimes of course you need to use the mouse to slap people and another another big tip i'd say for this is limit your jumps because jumping is it's scary if danny decides to turn while you're midair you yeah he's gonna see you falling and he's he's not gonna appreciate that so limit your jumps as much as you can if you need to go around things and that's another thing you do for the mouse one uh if something's blocking your way use the a and d key to move around it rather than uh turning your camera with the mouse so the next mini game i want to go into is called stepping stones this is the, the childhood classic where you uh, jump over glass into a pit of acid Everybody played that as a kid, right? So the thing about this one is you are totally screwed. No, 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 I'm kidding. Luckily, there are things you can do to help keep yourself alive. This one is really hard in almost every scenario I do this and this will bring it down to like one, two, three, maybe nobody survives, but it's a very unlikely lots of people will live this. So the first major thing I'd say is don't call your attention to yourself. Just don't, just, if people are punching someone, join them um if people are if people want somebody else to go agree with them it, don't make yourself obvious don't be like okay guys i'm definitely not going first because that's that's gonna get them to want to go after you so just just be really passive about it and try to go last you can't always go last but the farther back you go the more platforms are likely to have already fallen so you have more of a general idea where to go and if you're in the back you can't you can't be pushed unless you're on the same platform as somebody and then if you have to go there is a strategy you can use and that is where you stay on 
a platform near the end, tor towards the edge, to where nobody can really jump to you uh, without falling in. And if they do manage to jump to you, you can just give them a quick push off. So you can just stay there, uh, let the time go. Eventually, there will be like five seconds left, and that's when you want to guess the last jump, or maybe you already are on the last platform. You just want to guess and get in with as little time remaining as possible. So when people finally jump to where you were, they don't have enough time to make it to the platform, and they explode. And of course, if you don't guess the platform right, that means... Uh, you die, but they also don't have enough time to make it, so they die too. So, I mean, in my opinion, it's better to tie than to lose. Okay, so the next mini game I want to talk about is actually three. You, you have the three different tags, bomb tag, hat tag, and regular tag. These are all pretty similar. Bomb tag is where somebody has a bomb and they pass it on. There's only one bomb and it'll just randomly explode throughout it. There's hat tag, you actually want the hat. So you keep the hat on as much as possible and people try to take it away. And tag is where you just give the stick to somebody and at the end, if they have it, they die. So first, I do want to specifically talk about bomb tag. It's important to know, or at least guess, when the bombs are going to explode. So keep in mind the amount of people, how much time is left, and just know that they are going to explode. And keep in mind, the bomb always explodes with five seconds left, no matter what. So if there are like 70 seconds and there are three people, you can probably imagine that there will be two different explosions. So one would be at around 35, 40 seconds, and one will be at five seconds, and that'll bring it down to one person left. So just keep in mind the timing. Now, I, I'm just gonna talk about them in general. So of course, this is probably the most important one to utilize the B-Hop on. Uh, so that you can uh, run away from people as fast as you can. So just like using that little bit of b-hop for the extra speed is really helpful, especially in these tag ones. Um, another one I want to talk about is knowing the map. Knowing the map is really, really important. You can know where all the hiding spots are, where people normally go, and you can just know how to utilize like ramps, for example. That's the next thing I want to talk about, ramps. You can slide in the game by pressing C or crouch. So if you time it right, you can jump from above, and if you crouch right before you hit a ramp, you'll get a huge burst of speed and it's really really helpful in a lot of scenarios and most people don't actually use this so you will get you'll, you'll get really far away from them another thing I want to talk about again using voice chat you don't have to but making alliances is really nice especially on like tag or hat tag you can trade off the hat just to make sure you and your friend both make it and tag you know not to hit somebody and they'll maybe help you back one day and they won't hit you. And also, like stepping stones, don't call too much attention to yourself because you don't want to be targeted. The next game mode I'm going to talk about is King of the Hill. That's the one where there's a spot at the top, and the longer you stand there, the more points you get. You have bats, which fling people back really far, and um, it can be a bit annoying, but there are strategies that can help you with this, specifically making alliances. If you and a friend are both at the top, you're, it's a lot easier for you two to knock people off because you have twice as many people working to uh, just keep you on top, and it's a lot harder for other people to get up there and make points eventually of course you will fall off it's hard to stay the entire time up there but it is it, it is helpful and of course always make sure you are focusing on getting to the top rather than pushing people down so maybe don't go after somebody make your main goal just to get to the top and get as many points as possible and always make sure that when you're at the top that nobody is around you i do this by like spinning in circles a lot but it's helpful you can see exactly when somebody comes up the worst thing that could happen is somebody stinks up behind you and knocks you off the next game mode i want to talk about is the the one where the, the rocks fall and you fall into the lava and die. This game mode is interesting because it really depends on the amount of people that are left. So for example, if there was two people left, it would literally be 10 seconds and there'd be like 10 platforms, then they'd fall really quickly. But typically you'll have more people than that and it'll just, they'll fall like at a pace. Um, so the most important thing to notice here would be that you are not stranded. That's the worst thing that could happen. If you're stranded, there's really nothing you can do. So make sure you're not necessarily in the middle you don't want to call attention to yourself you want to make sure that you're towards the edge but you have lots of different options in case the one below you starts to fall and another important thing to know would be don't go for other players because it's kind of a 50 50 when it comes to you knocking them off and i don't really like doing that it's not worth it unless at the end of the round it is possible after the round ends to push someone in the lava and they do die so keep that in mind sometimes if they're not paying attention you could use that to your um advantage but uh just just be careful with that the next game mode is hide and seek everybody knows this game mode you have hiders and you have seekers i think you can imagine how danny made this this the seekers have knives and they they want they want you data so whenever a seeker gets a kill on a hider you typically have way more hiders than seekers whenever a seeker gets a kill on a hider they become a hider so it's really really important to note that you don't kill somebody next to another seeker because then they can immediately kill you on the other hand 
you can use this to your advantage. If, if you're by somebody and you're working to kill somebody else, if they get the kill, you can use that as a sneak attack on them and immediately cure yourself of the knife. And also, it's really important to make sure you know where all the seekers are, just because I've been snuck attack on and it, it, it's not, it's not, it's not the greatest. The next game I want to talk about is Splat, Splat, Tile Paint. I, I don't even know, but this one's weird. This It doesn't really fit the theme of this game, but it's there. It's kind of like Splatoon. You want to get as many squares as your color as possible. The team with the least amount instantly loses. So probably the biggest thing people don't really look for is making sure you get the walls. The walls are really important. They're because uh, like people normally don't go for them. So if you can get them, they're almost permanent points. All you have to do is really lean against the wall and occasionally jump just to get ones that are uh, higher up. And it's also important to not like go in a circle over and over again, because then at that point, you're probably, you're covering yourself up more than like you're covering other people up, unless you're following somebody. So if somebody is right in front of you and they keep painting tiles and you're right behind them, their tiles aren't actually doing anything. You're just making it so they don't get any points, which is good because that means they'll have less. So that when a team has less, your teammates can go after their colors to like specifically target their colors so they get lower and lower. So uh, the difference between third place and fourth place is a huge difference just to help make sure you don't end up like that. So it's really important to target teams with uh, less squares. And also following people is, is, is nice. Okay, so the last game that I wanna talk about is Lights Out. This one is, it's interesting. It definitely fits the mood of the game. You go back to the lobby, essentially, and the first 10 seconds are fine, and then it becomes dark and everybody gets a random weapon. It's it's always a hundred seconds. So there are, there are a couple different weapons you can get. I'm not sure of all of them. There's a stick. It gives you better knockback than a punch, but it does zero damage. There's a bat. I believe it does 12 damage and it has really good knockback. There's a pipe. It does like 20 damage with really good knockback. There's a knife. It does 12 damage with bad knockback and a katana that does like 20 damage with bad knockback. But there's also a gun and the gun is really scary. However, it does have limited ammo, so keep that in mind. Um, the best thing you can do to really prevent this one is play passive. The more you go around looking for people and trying to kill them, the more likely you are to get hit by them. And health is really important in this because you need to conserve all your health as much as possible because somebody could come out of nowhere and randomly do like 80 damage to you. So it's really important you have a lot of health and make sure you hide I will show, there is a really good hiding spot. If you go to the top bunk of a bed, you can run off it facing another bed and you can actually get like in between the second and third bed. It's a pretty good spot and most people don't look there. And even if somebody does look there, it's it's pretty hard for them to get to unless unless they have a gun. They, if, if they have a gun, things don't go that well. Anyways, that was my tips and tricks and strategies to how to get better at squid, uh, no, crab game. Anyways, if you guys like this, make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing. And if there are any major tips I forgot, post them in the comments below. Uh, keep in mind when this video came out, there might be more game modes in the future. So just keep in mind like when this video came out, cause I don't know, hopefully Danny updates this game. Of course, if you like this, hit the like button and I'll see you guys later.